Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com and I have a very, very fun one today. Uh, one of my favorite 80s tracks. This is a late, late 80s, 89. Uh, Youth Gone Wild, really cool riff. Kind of challenging to play as well, uh, but Skid Row has some really cool uh, guitar parts, two killer guitar players. So we are in standard tuning here and we're gonna start, I'm gonna work you through the entire song, uh, the solos, everything. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's start here in standard tuning. The intro just has a couple of chord, chord hits. All right, so simple enough. Now, it's a really kind of, uh, it's just a B-flat major chord. Uh, you can hear that note in there to make it a full major, but you can just play it as a power chord if you want. Just a power chord off the first fret of the A string. But if you want to get that note in there, you can hear it in the recording. Just kind of down up, down up, and then we kick into the main riff. All right, so that starts with the two, um, the D and the G string open. Then you're gonna grab the third fret on the D and the third fret on the G. Just I like to play them with these two fingers, just the middle and the ring finger. You're gonna play those, slide up, and then back down. So slide up to five and then back down to three. And then back to the open strings. Then you're gonna play three on the D string, two on the G. And then move that two up to three on the G, but keep that uh, same note on the D string. So this. So far we have this. Then back to the opens. So all together. Repeat. Now here, the second time through, instead of ending it with the open strings, you're gonna end it with this E flat power chord. So that's gonna be the first fret on the D string, third fret on the G, which you're already holding. So you can just go like this, hold that finger there, and then just place that first finger down on the D string. Then the fourth fret here with your pinky on the uh, B string. So we have this. Back through the slide riff, and then it goes back to the E flat chord, E flat power chord. So it's uh, the second and third ending are the same. So so far, open string ending, then E flat power chord ending, back to that power chord ending. So this. And it's got a different ending the fourth time through. So, so far we have this. So then we do that slide again. And we have that different ending here. So that's a slide back to the open strings. And then what we're gonna do is this. So what you're doing here is you're playing the you're gonna play the uh, E flat power chord, but just the first fret uh, on the D string and then the third fret on the G. We have this. And when you do that, you're gonna quickly pull off to the open D string just with your uh, uh, index finger. And then hit the open A string twice, just mute it. And then come over and grab the B flat power chord. So just move everything up one, one string. And then we're gonna have. You're gonna basically do the same thing. You're gonna pick it, pull off to the A. You just kind of lift off both fingers and then grab an A power chord, open A string, into the G power chord. All right, so this G chord is just played like a standard G major chord, except you are going to mute the A string with the bottom of the middle finger. So, so far we have this. And when you get to that last G chord, you just let that ring out and just roll the volume off a little bit. And then you have the verse, which sounds like this. And 
that takes us to the pre-chorus there. All right, so, uh, so I've rolled off the volume just a little bit just to clean it up a touch. And, it, and what he does is he comes uh, just a quick little down up muted strings. And then he played these little dyads, which is two note chords. Um, so we had this third fret on the D string, second fret on the G is the first chord there. And then move it up to the fifth fret on the D, third fret on the G. So like this. Like that ring. And then another couple of muted strums, and then the next two chords is just that third fret again. It's the same as the first chord we played, the three and the two, followed by the first fret on the D, third fret on the G. It's that E flat power chord. So we have this. Repeat. And on this last one, the second time through, when you hit that E flat, start rolling the volume back up, and then you're gonna have this little fill that takes you down to the pre-chorus. All right, so that's a pull off one to zero on the D string, and then pull off three to one on the A. So that's the first four notes. And then the next four notes is, that's just pulling off three, one, zero on the A string over to one on the low E string. Low E string, so with this. All right, so. Now the pre-chorus sounds like this. Back to the main riff, which is also the chorus. All right, so we have we start with this F power chord off the um, low E string, first fret. So I'm gonna do some series of palm mute, just all down strokes, and then accent. Then you just go to a G power chord again, and then we have this. That's pretty cool. All right. And uh, so what's going on there? Um, it's just a pull off. Of the, you play the double stop here, the third fret of the D and the G. You play it and you pull off to the open D and the open G. Do it twice. Then come over to the third fret on the A and the D together. So then the fifth fret on the A and the D. And then a couple of muted strums, and then you're gonna grab the fifth fret there on the D and the G. So like this. And then we have this cool little. Uh, uh, now I'm adding pinch harmonics there. If you don't know what pinch harmonics are, go to guitarlessons365.com. Uh, I think it's in the intermediate section. Uh, just this pinch harmonics or squealies, people call them. They call them a billion different names. Um, uh, but first of all, um, you play it off the fifth fret of the A, then three, one, then the open A. So you're gonna add a lot of vibrato to the note, and the pitch harmonic uh, just, if you, if you don't know what it is and you haven't watched that lesson yet, it's when the, the thumb and the, the flesh of the thumb and the pick hit the string at the same time over a harmonic note point. Sounds complicated, but it's usually just done by feel. It's like one of those things, you make a mistake one time, oh, what is that? That sounded cool. And then you can feel what it feels like, and then you can recreate it, so. Anyway, that takes you back down to the five, three, one, zero, back to the one power chord here that we started with. And then we're gonna jump up here to the E flat power chord off the sixth fret of the A string. Let that ring a little bit, and the very end of the pre-chorus is... So that's that, you just come back one fret here at the D power chord, or the fifth, fifth fret, and it's a... Just kind of hit that down up, down up, kind of like the beginning of the song. Uh, the same one. 
but of course these are closer together. And then, so we have this six, 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 pull off to five, over to six on the low E string. So we have this. And then you're gonna jump into the chorus by just hitting the open strings, those open D and open G, it gives you a chance to shift back here. That is probably one of the coolest riffs of that of the 80s. It's a really fun riff to play. All right, so then we go back through the verse, pre-chorus, chorus, the exact same way, and we get to the solos uh, by Dave the Snake Sabo and Scotty Hill. So uh, Sabo solos first, um, and then Scotty Hill comes in with his. Um, so underneath it, real quick. Um, so if you want to switch off with another guitar player, uh, the chord progression underneath it is this. All right, so that's just the A power chord. Kind of do that same rhythm we did earlier on that. And then the G power chord just used as a passing chord down to the F power chord here at the first fret of the low E. Then back up with that G as a passing chord again. And just repeat, you're back at the A. You just repeat that same four chords again. And then at the end of it, actually the, you go back to the A, G, F, the second time through, we have this kind of the end of the uh, pre-chorus. Okay, and then um, actually there's a breakdown part there. So we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so let's take a look at these solos. I'm going to play them both uh, together. They're, they're, they sound together, but it's really two guys doing them. So uh, I'll play through the whole thing. So here we go. Alright, so we let me turn that those ridiculous effects off. So here we go. We're gonna start here um, with uh, kind of a you're gonna hit the G string and uh, with a slight harmonic and then just bend upwards uh, with the trim bar. And then Then we go into a bend of the 20th fret on the B string with a pinch harmonic as well as that. All right, and then we get to this first lick, which is uh, kind of tricky and a pretty unique lick. It looks like this. All right, so what we're gonna do there is we're gonna hit the 15th fret twice, and then do a quick little hammer on to 16, pull back off to 15. Then go over to the 15th, I mean, sorry, the 17th fret on the G string, back to 15 on the B. And then we're going to go down to 17 on the G, 15, 14, over to 15 on the D, 17 on the A, back up to the 15 on the D, back to the 14 on the G, and this time with a pinch harmonic on it. So we have this. All right, so that's a pretty unique lick. The next one sounds like this. So there's a, a little pedal point lick. So we're gonna start with the 15th fret on the high E string. Go 15, 17, then 13, 17, then 12, 17. So you keep coming back to that top note. Then basically you take that same lick over to the B string. So 15 to 17 on the B, then 13, 17. And when you get down to 12, you're gonna do a just a quick hammer 
on to 13, back, pull back off to 12, and then over to 14 on the G string and then slide down. All right, and then the last part of uh, Dave the Snake's Sabos. You're sliding, you kind of really slide in all the way down here up the B string to the 15th fret, and then roll over to the 15 on the high E, and then back to the 15 on the B. Then up to 17 on the high E, over to 17 on the, the B. And then 19 on the high E, back to that 17 on the B. 20 on the high E, back to that 17 on the B, and then bend it, bend, holster that bend, and then you can pick it normal. Pull it down. All right, then uh, Scotty Hill's solo comes in. So that's a little, that's a kind of a half slow half step bend at the fourth fret on the G string. And then he's gonna pick it again, bend and release, pull off the two and then back to the, the fourth fret. So they're using lots of pinch harmonics and stuff. And then he's gonna slide into the seventh or just of the, of the uh, D string. It's really heavily muted. Over to the five on the G, back to that muted seventh on the D string. Roll over to the seventh fret there on the G string. Back to the seventh muted on the D. Back to the fifth fret there on the G. And then you know bend and release at the third, seventh fret there. Release to five. Back to seven. Play this. All right, now the last phrase. All right, so we're gonna have the fifth fret there on the G string into a bend at the eighth fret on the uh, B string. And then you get to start this little descending. And those notes are the fifth fret on the high E string, then eight, seven, five on the B. Then eight, seven on the G. Back over to five on the B. Try this. Then eight, seven, five on the G. Then after you play that five on the G, go over to the seventh fret on the D. Roll over to seven on the G. And to the five. Now here it gets kind of crazy because he starts doing a, a really just a lot of uh, a die far with the whammy. So he starts going. So he's really doing a lot of whammy work with all this stuff. So it doesn't really matter what you play when you're doing that because it's it's just so he's trying to create chaos. Um, so that's what's going on at the end of it. Now he's probably doing some just kind of. Starts with just kind of a bend and release at the fifth fret on the G, pull off the three, and then maybe pull off five to three there on the D, pull off five three on the A, slide down to one, and then pull off three to one on the low E. So you can just kind of do something like that, and while you're just kind of really just doing crazy stuff with the way you are, because that's really all he's really trying to do. And then he'll end it with a hitting a pinch harmonic on the open G string and just kind of dive bar there at the very end and that's the end of the solo there. So then we have this um, section, this kind of breakdown section where we just, they do the
All right, so those chords are just the power chord off the first fret of the A string, then the first fret of the low E, and then the open G power chord. Now, um, Scotty Hill usually plays this open G power chord. Uh, you'll see uh, Dave Sebo usually goes, he'll play the actual normal power chord version of it, and they, when they come together, they sound really cool. One playing that, and one playing that. So you're gonna see them sometimes just play that G like that, all right? All right, so then we get to this outro chorus, which has got a slight change in it. So we have the same riff. Now, so you do that the first two times. The third time you hear this. So they actually go to those chords that are in the breakdown, which is that B flat power chord off the first fret of the A, the F power chord off the first fret of low E, and back to the G. So that's really the only time you hear that. Then they go back to the normal riff. All right, so just that third time you hear the chorus riff at the end of the song is when they'll do that little and then they'll come back in uh, with the normal riff. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a very, very fun song to play. And it's got some great guitar work, some really cool solos. And I uh, hope you get a lot of it. All right, I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.